My name is Rehan Alik, and I'm an assistant professor at Duquesne University, and my lab studies natural adaptations to cellular stress. We all know that sublethal stress can elicit adaptations in cells that prevents their cell loss in response to a second challenge. This phenomenon is known as preconditioning in the ischemia literature, and it's very well established. What we don't know is the response of cells to higher concentrations of stress, severe stress that is toxic and kills some fraction of the cellular population. So in my lab, we wondered whether severe stress can leave behind surviving cells that are more resistant to subsequent challenges than control cells. And we asked this question in astrocytes, which are a type of glia. Glia are a very abundant type of cell in the brain. In fact, astrocytes are the most abundant cell type in the brain. They are known to support neurons. They're well known for their resistance to stress. So we thought that this would be a good model in which to test our hypothesis that severe stress can elicit adaptations in this resistant type of cell. So in order to deliver stress, we decided to use a proteasome inhibitor called MG132. The proteasome is a barrel-shaped recycling trash can in cells. It takes misfolded proteins and degrades them into peptides that are then cleared by peptidases for recycling into fresh proteins. So we treated cells twice with MG132 two lethal concentrations of MG132. And we found that the astrocytes that remained behind after treatment with high concentrations of MG132 were resistant against a second hit. Then we wanted to understand the mechanism of adaptation in the astrocytes, so we assayed for several heat shock proteins and other defensive proteins in the cell. We also assayed glutathione levels. Glutathione is such an important antioxidant that it is present in millimolar concentrations in cells, and astrocytes are known to be the major source of glutathione in the brain. Several heat shock proteins were upregulated in response to stress. Protective proteins such as heme oxygenase 1 were upregulated in response to stress. And severely stressed astrocytes were completely prevented from the usual loss of glutathione in response to the second hit. In other words, stressed astrocytes preserved their levels of glutathione. They also preserved their levels of ATP in response to the second hit. Both ATP and glutathione levels were preserved. So in order to test whether the glutathione adaptations were responsible for the adaptations, we inhibited glutathione synthesis with a compound called butionine sulfoxamine, and that depletes glutathione stores in cells. In the presence of butionine sulfoxamine, the second hit actually became toxic in astrocytes. So the severely stressed astrocytes were no longer protected against the second hit in the face of glutathione depletion. The true impact of two hits, in other words, was unmasked with glutathione loss or loss of endogenous defenses. And we think these studies are relevant to neurodegenerative diseases because those diseases are so slow to progress. So we've shown that astrocytes become harder to kill with severe stress, with severe protein misfolding stress. And we have observed something similar in neurons as well. Neurons also become harder to kill with oxidative stress. So these observations may be relevant to neurodegenerative diseases because these diseases are so slow to progress in the brain. So you can imagine in the human brain, if you lose a fraction of cells, the cells that remain behind may be the more resistant cells that take more and more injury in order to become damaged and actually die. And if you have any questions about any of my research, feel free to Google me, Rehana Leek, and email me any questions. You can find my website on, at Duquesne University's website. Thank you very much.